Hi, this is Stacy Goldring, and I'd like to talk to you about reader's block. Not writer's block, reader's block. And it's something that I've dealt with actually this past summer. So I thought I'd do a little bit of research into it and share with you what I found. If you suffer from this feeling where you look at a page and the words won't stick. The first thing you have to ask yourself is something else going on in your life? And of course, there's a bazillion things going on in all of our lives. And reading for us should be a way to escape and enjoy. And it's like a therapy and it just recharges you and it takes you anywhere you want to go, right? But when you have reader's block, you could have something else that's going on in your life that just does not allow you to focus. And if that is the case, we're going to stop right here and you're going to, going to grab your phone and you're going to find a therapist <laughs> because you need to uh, find tools uh, to deal with whatever that problem is. And you know, you can call me because I have a stable therapist. I'm happy to share. Uh, but um, you need to know what else is happening there because it's your brain trying to tell you something. We only have so much that we can work with in here. And if for some reason, Whatever that is, is spilling in and stealing from your sacred time, which is reading, then that needs to be addressed and that's important. And that's what they call nowadays self-care. So go ahead, turn this off. And now you should be making your phone call. All right, if you don't think that it is something else going on in your life, let me suggest some other things, kind of a checklist, and then you can see if any of these help you out. It could be the view. And what I mean by that is, you may need glasses or you may need your prescription changed. Uh, so recently, I got these glasses. And frankly, I'm going like this when I read and I'm, I'm thinking, well, maybe I need to go back to my old glasses. So then I put these back on and I tried reading and uh, I started getting the headache. So then I thought, okay, uh, you know what? It's two for one. I'm, oh, I don't even know where it is. I bought another pair of glasses and now I just have a headache and I can't read anything. So I have another appointment with the ophthalmologist. Long story that I'm trying to tell you is it could very well be a vision issue and you don't realize it. So get that checked out. You know, it doesn't even matter which one I wear. It's all not working. All right, so um, the next thing is, uh, Try a new genre. If you've been reading nonfiction forever, it's, tr it's really time to try a novel. Or if you've been reading poetry, let's go ahead and shift it over to sci-fi. Just try you know, something a little different. And um, I'm not a poetry person at all. Uh, that is until I found Mary Oliver. I would like to suggest if you're having reader's block to give poetry a shot and I put you in good hands with Mary. Um, what is wonderful about reading poetry? Okay, it's a lot shorter than reading a book, so you get that sense of being, you know, accomplishment. And it, there's something ethereal about it. It just kind of takes you down a road you normally wouldn't go through. See, the poems aren't that long and they're um, in different shapes and sizes, etc. cetera. So, um, oh, and here's Lucy. Lucy, what do you like to read? Hello, okay. So we have another um, canine reader and her name, okay, and now Lucy is gone. Okay, she may come back, I don't know. You wanna come up, come up? No, all right. If, if poetry um, is not your thing, you think that is a little awkward, uh, try short stories. I know that the woman, I think her name is Elizabeth Stroud, she just, uh, she wrote Ol Olive Kitteridge. She has new short stories, I believe it's called Olive Again, and that's coming out. Uh, but the idea of a short story uh, being not as valid as a, like a thick book uh, is nonsense. And actually the Economy Awards shows the brilliance of a writer. Uh, Flannery O'Connor is always my go-to for short stories, so you may want to try A Good Man is Hard to Find. And then there's the slow skis. Some authors force you to read in a certain rhythm. That's how masterful they are. I would suggest you try books 
that have stories that make you slow down. My prescription for this would be anything by Julian Barnes, The Only Story, or um, a, a Sense of an Ending, David Mitchell, any of David Mitchell's work. Uh, John Steinbeck's East of Eden is a incredible experience of, it's like the slow food movement of reading. He methodically takes you through through this beautiful Americana Cain and Abel story. But I believe it may be documented. What was your blood pressure? But he really slows it down and it's such a beautiful story. So I would definitely suggest uh, East of Eden. And I have like two or three copies of that over here. Happy to loan. Uh, you need to commit maybe to X number of pages before you give up. Whether it's 50, whether it's five, whether it's a first chapter, go ahead and put a goal there. And if you don't like it, then get rid of it. And I say get rid of it because I'm giving you permission. Permission is granted. You never, ever, ever have to finish a book. It's supposed to be enjoyable. This is not a marathon. You are not in AP English anymore, and you're not gonna get a grade. If you don't like it, get rid of it. Many people feel like they have committed and they have to follow through. This is not a marriage. This is not a contract. This is supposed to be pleasurable. Get rid of it. Try rereading. When I read The Awakening at age 21, blew my mind. I revisited The Awakening and maybe when I was like 48 or 50, and it was a completely different book. So pick up something you've read in the past and try it now and see what happens. It's very interesting. Try some heavy lifting. Okay, I'm gonna stand up and I apologize if this is taboo or whatever. But um, you know those coffee table books? Some of those big books, those like art books and stuff, they are good reading. Uh, recently, a, a friend of mine gave me this beautiful book, um, Augusta Savage, Renaissance Woman. And this is actually one of those books that's the catalog from an art exhibit. Uh, this happened to be at the Cummer Museum of Art and Gardens here in Jacksonville, Florida, about the amazing sculptor Augusta Savage. And I read it. I read it cover to cover. And what's great, it's not as long as it looks because there's big pictures. Look, look, pictures practically every page. So these museum books, you get to travel through a museum. There is an excellent um, opening by um, uh, Holly Karras, the, um, the curator. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a great way to feel accomplished. You learn something and uh, lots of pictures. This was another one a gift uh, several years ago, and I read it cover to cover. But again, look, pictures, and the paper feels good. So you learn so much, and you get that visual eye candy. Isn't that beautiful? I actually have um, stationery with that on it. Uh, and it's, um, they're really cheap if you go to thrift shops because people eventually get rid of them. So you can even go there and look for them. But of course, you know I'm gonna tell you to shop local. But these big art books, I'm telling you, you probably have them and you've never cracked them because you know they look good over there. But try reading them. Okay. Uh, listen to audiobooks. It's not cheating. In fact, your brain uh, gets as much exercise from audio as it does from reading. So permission granted do audible books uh, or completely the other spectrum you need to cut the cord on the technology you need to just cut it off uh, so i would uh, here's my prescription for you i challenge you tonight when you go to bed to leave your phone outside your bedroom it cannot be in the radius of the bedroom area okay that's verboten the only thing that can come near you and in bed with you is a storybook. Just take a book, go to bed that way. And I say this a lot, and I don't mean to take anyone to take it the wrong way, but you're not that important. 
I'm not that important. We don't need 24 seven. There are very few of us who would need to have that phone right there 24 seven, honestly. So just get rid of it and have a 1972 experience of just going to bed with a book and uh, see how that goes. I've suggested this to in my writing workshops and I'll suggest it to you too. Uh, you know, you need to maybe change the time you're reading or the place that you're reading or the lighting. The reason why you may have reader's block is simply because uh, the light isn't good or the time of day you can't really focus that time of day anymore or you're really not comfortable reading in the living room anymore, you need to be outside. Whatever it is, consider changing the time of day when you read and that may you know, give you a, a, a kickstart to uh, reading again. Now, when I see, uh, on, when I look on websites for books, etc., and uh, they say, if you like this, you may like that, that is a blessing and it's a curse. It's a blessing because if you did like a book by an author, now you have all these other authors to choose from or you have very similar books. So that's so lovely that now uh, you have a whole, uh, you know, canon of uh, a whole library shelves of, of books from which you can now choose. However, call me paranoid, I feel like it's like a manipulation. Like I don't want some algorithm deciding what book I want to read. I don't like that at all. In fact, I don't even like to read the back cover of a book. Sometimes I just, I'll judge a book by its cover, I, whatever, I, and I'll just start reading. So you may want to just um, forget that, you know, suggest another, and just go look for a cover. If it works, give it a shot. Put books down shelve it go to a bookstore and just peruse go to the library and just look around and you just may be inspired you don't know what you're looking for but whatever is out there knows it needs you and you will find it there is there is always a marriage between the reader and the author that I can guarantee. It's just making yourself available to find that book. So maybe it takes just actually going to the bookstore and looking around until you find whatever appeals to you. And obviously, and lastly, I'm sure you're saying, thank goodness, uh, find a book club. Uh, and particularly my book clubs, because you never have to read the book to come and learn and be together. Because I believe that books and reading and book clubs, they're just springboards for understanding one another. I hope this helps you if you have reader's block. If you have suggestions, uh, please list them below. And um, I gotta tell you, um, I hope, I really, I really hope this has been helpful. Thank you. This has been Stacy Goldring and I hope to see you next time.